Hey, this is Rob. I'm going to show you how I made this Geneva wheel mechanism in Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, I can animate this in case you've never seen a Geneva mechanism. This is how it works. You have a drive wheel that has this constant rotary motion. Maybe it's attached to a motor or a hand crank. And then it translates that into this intermittent rotary motion on the driven wheel. So you can imagine that the number of slots, the size of these wheels, and um, uh, oh, well, th that basically kind of changes the way that the whole mechanism moves. So um, I think maybe I can just give you a preview of what I'm going to explain in the video, which is that uh, we have all of these user parameters that determine all the geometry of the, um, the two wheels. And what I could actually do is change uh, the number of pins from 5 to 4, and you'll see that it actually adjusts, and this uh, should still work. So um, the idea is that you can you can start to change uh, parameters and affect how the model works, and everything will still um, still fit properly. So let's take a look at where uh, where I got all of these dimensions from, and how I was able to get a list of variables that determine all of the geometry. That comes from uh, this guy. So if you go to uh, if you just Google for make Geneva wheels of any size, you'll come to this page, and it's pretty great. This guy basically looked in a an old book called uh, the Handbook of Machining and Metalworking Calculations, and uh, he made this great animation that shows how all the geometry is derived from basically these two triangles. So you've got a green triangle uh, that determines all the dimensions of the Geneva driven wheel and then the uh, blue triangle determines the dimensions of the Geneva drive wheel. Here he's also got these two slides that show all these formulas for how you get those those uh, different dimensions but really you only need to look at one of them. You would look at this one if you know the drive crank radius so that's basically on the drive wheel you have this uh, ra the radius from the distance from the pin to the center of the drive wheel. Or if you instead knew the dimensions of the driven wheel, you could use this other slide that he has here. So basically, I'm going to just go with this first slide, and I would then know the uh, drive crank radius in whatever millimeters or inches or something. I'd know how many, um, pin, how many slots I want, so that's the number that I just changed in my model. Um, I can just make that up in the beginning and, and change it later. Any of these variables we could change later and have the, the model get affected um, instantly. So the, the next one is the, the diameter of the drive pin. And then he added this also this tolerance variable. So there's some slop in there in case you were to 3D print this or laser cut it or something, it, would, it wouldn't be so tight that it doesn't work. And everything else is basically a formula that, that uses those variables or some combination of these variables. So if I look here in my uh, change parameters, I've already set this up in this blank file. Here they all are. There's, you know, the, the ones that are known are this n, uh, the number of pins. We've also got the drive crank radius and the clearance is five millimeters. I just made that up. And then the slot, no, not slot, uh, the drive pin diameter is 75 millimeters. So I just kind of made these numbers up. But, um, and I can change them at any point. All the other ones are all the formulas that came from his web page. So when you add a parameter, you can add the comment like I did, so you can make sense of this later. The variable names, it didn't like just N, A, C, B, so I had to add a one after each of them. And uh, some of these, you know, like the number of pins, shouldn't have a unit associated with it, but drive crank radius, I, I would have liked to have made it millimeters for the unit, but then when you start to uh, if you make that millimeters, when you try and use it in formulas later, it gets mad at you. So uh, just no units all the time, and you'll be fine. Okay, so now what I'll do is start making that first uh, triangle. You can see to make the driven wheel, we base it all on this green triangle. So I think what I'll do is just make a sketch on this work plane, and I'll just kind of make a sloppy version of what that triangle looks like. And then I'll start dimensioning it. So here's... Uh, C, and here's B, and this one is A. So there's my triangle, and um, just to start at the origin, I'm going to say this point should be coincident with the origin. 
And that's it. Um, that's my beginning point. And if you have any questions about how I'm proceeding, it's basically I'm just copying his animation that he made, uh, which is really nice and elegant and has classical music in the background. So uh, basically, I need a uh, circle that starts there and ends there. The next thing I need to do is make that slot. And um, the way that I do that is by making a circle. Uh, really, you know, it could be an arc but I'm making a circle because it's easier. You can, there, there are lots of ways to do this. So that was W, that was the radius um, there. You have to be careful about the difference between radius and diameter. Uh, I'll try and catch it wherever I can. So I'm gonna make the two, let me just move this out of the way. I'm gonna make the two uh, lines that complete my slot. And the way I'm gonna do it is just to kind of make it wildly incorrect, uh, starting over there. And uh, so you can see it added a, a coincident constraint to say that that line should be on the circle and this line should end at this circle. So that's good, but I want this line to be tangent with that circle. You can see it's obviously screwed up there. So um, I'm going to click on that line and say that it needs to be tangent to the circle. It's now tangent, but of course it's going in the wrong direction, so I'm going to use the parallel constraint say this line should be parallel to this line. Okay, uh, before I go any further, I'm going to do this too. Um, I'm going to make my triangle lines into construction lines. It will make life better. So there's my last line. Okay. Now I'll make the other line. Again, it would be nice if it just snapped to a tangent point here, but it's not doing it, so I'm just gonna uh, make a sloppy version of it, and then I'll add a tangent constraint from there to there, and I want this line also to be parallel to that line. Okay, that's it. You can see it's added the, con the uh, constraints to make sure that it always lands in the right place. That's why it it's just happens to be the right length. So there's another dimension here, which is how long the slot is. And that's just the length of this line. So I can uh, add this dimension, and that is S, I believe. Yes. OK, uh, last thing I need to do, so I've already got my slot, basically. The last thing I need to do is make the cutout. So you can see here's the driven wheel. There's a slot, and there's a cutout. If I make a slot and a cutout, I can rotate that all around, make a pattern so that it just repeats. I don't need to draw all of these. So let me make that um, cutout. The way that works is we just start here, and uh, the dimension is y1. Again, this could be an arc, but um, I'm just going to make a circle. So that's actually the radius. You can see it's not landing in the right place, so I'm just going to multiply it times 2. That's it. Uh, if you look, there's basically my driven wheel. I am going to add another detail here, which is just um, somewhere to put a, uh, an axle. So that's my wheel. When I highlight that, profile, you can see it kind of looks like what I want. So I'm going to stop the sketch, and um, I don't usually name these sketches, but um, maybe I should. This is the driven wheel. And um, so I'll stop the sketch, and I will extrude it. So let me get back to this home orientation and just push-pull this profile, and I'll just make it 50 millimeters. Hit OK. And what I want to do now is select all of those faces that make up this. I'm holding down the button, by the way, to reach the face behind. I'm holding down Shift, and I've selected all of those four faces that make up this, uh, this kind of feature. Then I'll go to Create and Pattern, Circular Pattern. I'll rotate them around an axis. I don't really, I guess I could rotate them around that. I can also rotate them around here. And then it's asking me how many times do I want to rotate around. Well, that's actually one of my variables, n1. I hit OK. There it is. That's my driven wheel. It's all done, so I'm going to right click on it, create a component, and I'll call that component the uh, driven wheel. OK, so um, I think what I'm going to do is, even though it uh, might be helpful to have some of these lines. I think mostly they're confusing, so I'm just going to make a new sketch that is all based around this blue triangle, and that's going to determine uh, the dimensions for the drive wheel. So I'll create a new sketch on that same work plane, and uh, I'm going to hide the wheel. And um, I do I do want to see this because I need to make that triangle uh, line, this line of the triangle, collinear with this one. So I'll just start by doing that. So here's 
here's my line. You can see it's uh, parallel there. It's a parallel constraint showing up. And, um, and then I have another line here. Uh, it's trying to make a midpoint constraint, but you can see that's not vertical. What I really want is for it to be perpendicular. So there's the perpendicular constraint appearing. Okay, I don't even need that bottom line. I'll just stick with this. I'll see if I can make these into um, structure lines. There we go. There's one, and here's the other one. Now I've got my triangle. I can even hide this other. Uh, yeah, I don't think I need this anymore. Well, I'll leave it up for now. So that's my green triangle. And if I look, uh, I think my next step is to make this uh, cutout. Actually, I need to make this circle and then make that cutout. So this circle should be. Uh, Huh. Eh. All right. I think I could have a problem here, but I think uh, well, I th this this dimension is supposed to, is another one of my variables. If I look at the website, uh, it's z. So I'll make this z one. Of course, it needs to be times two. Okay. Sorry, I was worrying for nothing. So you can see actually from the old sketch, uh, that's the that outer circle is the size of the um, kind of the slot in the driven wheel, and you can see that there's a little bit of a distance between these two. So I'm gonna just hide that other one so I don't get confused. Here is the beginning of my um, of my inner wheel here, and now I'm just gonna make the um, arc which goes. You know that's the center point, and it goes from there to there. So the easiest way to do that this time is probably to use an actual arc from the center point. And there's the center point. I will start. You know, uh, okay. I can see why this is looking strange. Um, this is not really sort of land over here. I this, and that's because I didn't give this a dimension. So if we look, this dimension here is supposed to be v. Sorry about that. So let's dimension that and we'll solve all of our worries. Okay, now for some reason we did lose the uh, perpendicular constraint here. I think because I don't have that other sketch open maybe, I'm not sure, but I do wanna make sure that this is perpendicular to this. Okay, now we're talking. And if you look, this actually seems like it's uh, coincident with that one. So it seems like it's all worked out. Um, so now what I need is to get my arc going. And it starts from here and lands there. Okay, so now you can see that's actually, um, I don't know where this line came from, but I'm gonna make it into a construction line. So now if you look, I've actually got a profile that looks like the middle of my um, wheel. I am gonna add also my hole in the middle for the axle. So now I've really got the exact profile that I need. The other thing is I need to make the actual pin. Uh, and for that, I'll need to see the other sketch. So what I'm looking for is not the, just so what happens with the dimensions that I have, my second triangle lands right next to this other point, which is the center of my um, slot. So I want to make sure I make this pin on the right spot. So if I started it from there, it would be off. I want to start it in the center of this, and this is P1. There's my, there's my pin. So this is really it. Uh, there's another detail in that we need um, we need kind of the, the base of it. And it's not really a good drawing of a Geneva wheel here, but you can see there's a base also. And I just made it an arbitrary size. It's not ideal because um, well, because as you change the size of this, uh, this also needs to be um, related to these other parts in some ratio to make sure that it adjusts with it. It's not a part of any of these formulas because really it's not even, it's not critical. So I'm not sure, um, I haven't really thought about how to address that, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe a way is to, to make it extra large and say, um, say it's basically like very close to that. <laughs> so let's let's do this and then say that this dimension, mm, let's see, okay, hang on. I'm going off 
off of my mental script right now, but let's say that there's a line that goes from here to here, and it's, uh, it's 25 millimeters. I don't know if this would really solve anything, but let's see. Um, so this is, I'll make that into a uh, construction line. And I'll make my circle go all the way out to there. So I'm not sure if that'll work, but basically I just want to keep it 25 millimeter, millimeters away from here. And that's, I, that's my only problem if I make it too big and it runs into this pin. I'm not sure that'll solve the problem. But uh, in any case, we've got most of what we need. There's that, there's the pin, and there's the background. So um, I'll hit stop sketch. I'll hide my other one just to... Make sure I'm dealing with the relevant part here. Uh, not sure why that circle ended up in this sketch, but that's okay. So um, I'm going to press pull, and I'm going to raise this up. Actually, let me try and highlight these first so I can do them at the same time. I want this to go up 50 millimeters. I'll hit OK. And uh, it's made a new body here. Ah, OK. Got two bodies that's all right um, and then I'll turn this sketch back on to to get that bottom part I'm, I'm gonna extrude it down and um, it's not ideal because then I have to select all these parts I guess it's not a big deal uh, I could do that or I could actually just make another sketch that's just a circle let me try um, approaching it from the bottom and doing a press pull of all these parts so all these profiles so this profile, this profile, this one, this one, and this one. Let's see if that works. So I want to go down. Yeah, it's fine. 25 millimeters, let's say. It's going to join with the previous bodies. So now I've got one body that is my entire drive wheel. Hide the sketches. There's my drive wheel. Okay. So um, I will make this a component, and I'll call it drive wheel and I think I'm done um, here we are I've got a little bit of a gap between here and here you can see that and there's a little bit of a gap between uh, the pin and the slot uh, everything's all lined up the the part about making the joints is a little bit too much to add on here um, because I have to make a base also and kind of just will slow everything down but basically if you just uh, if you look here I have my two wheels I made a base and I've got these two axles that stand up. Uh, I made a joint on each one, so all you have to do is click on this wheel and the base, and then uh, assemble as an as-built joint. And you can make a revolute joint here and do the same here between the base and the, uh, the drive wheel. And once you do that, you're able to do things like drive the joints, where you can actually see this, uh, see this move in kind of real time um, one other thing I should mention is that it actually won't work when you do that. So uh, let me let me show you what it will look like. Turn off contact. So even though I'm driving, uh, if I want to drive this joint again, um, when I move this around, it just goes right through the other one. So you actually have to turn on contact sets. Uh, it's a very CPU expensive process, so it's not on by default. So what you have to do is enable contact sets. And uh, I think if you, um, well, I, I don't know, that may be all I need to do. Let's see. Yeah, that's all I need to do. 